Hello friends, very warm welcome to my business loss channel. I hope friends you all must be enjoying watching my videos. As friends, I have told you that I have developed 70 videos, 70 regarding this business loss paper. Uh, I've covered all five units as per national education policy. All five units, ICA, uh, special contracts, ICA has got two units and special contracts, then sale of goods act, and the last is LLP act. So my videos, friends, they cover 100% syllabi of Delhi University. And at least 90 to 95% of other universities or state universities or institutes because business law syllabus is the same except one or two acts. And if you find that one or two chapters have not been covered in my videos, you can always write in the comment section. I will definitely cover. See, you have got corporate laws in your syllabus, say one, two chapters. Then you can always write in the comment section. I will always develop videos for you and I will upload those videos. So friends, as you already know that practical exercises have been covered for the first time in national, in business law syllabus. Already I have developed three videos regarding this. So this is the fourth video which I have developed and which I'm going to upload today. So the title is sale deed here. What all headings I'm going to cover. I would like to read friends. First is meaning and validity of sale deed. Then registration of sale deed. Components of sale deed, sale deed number, sale deed documents required for property. What are the documents which are required for registration of property? Then execution of sale deed. What are the points which must be borne in mind while executing sale deed. So friends, let us begin now. The very first heading is the meaning of sale deed. Let us understand friends, what is this sale deed? The sale deed is one of the most crucial documents in the case of property ownership transfer. So there are two parties involved. One is a buyer, other is a seller. You all know friends, when we talk about deed agreement, there are always two parties involved. One is a buyer, other is the seller. So here we are talking about property ownership. That immovable property has to be transferred from one person to another. Then sale deed has to be drafted and executed. Sale deed is basically a legal document that enables the owner or the seller of the property to transfer the rights of the property in the name of the buyer. So all rights which the seller had, he would like to transfer to the buyer or in the name of the buyer. It is mandatory to get property registered. Remember friends, registration is must. And it has to be done at the local sub-registrar office once the seller draws the sale deed draft with the help of the advocate. So first of all, the, uh, the advocate uh, has to draft this or seller has to draft with the help of advocate. Or most of the times, you know, we find that advocate drafts and then, you know, it is shown to the seller. And if the seller or the buyer, they want to make any changes, then those changes are incorporated in the sale deed. The buyer can become the rightful owner of the property only after the registration of the sale deed in the contest of the law. So nothing new friends already have told you the registration is must. And even friends, you all know that one of the essentials of valid contract, which you have studied in ICA Indian Contract Act in the very first chapter, that is there are certain formalities. So registration is one of the formalities. If registered document is not registered, which need to be registered, then that agreement will not be valid. It will remain agreement only. It will never take the shape of valid contract in the eyes of law. Moving ahead, friends, a sale deed includes everything from the obligations and rights of the, both the parties to the property's details. 
in the sale deed property details are to be given and it also includes obligations and rights of both the parties. So both the parties are considered here. At the time of creating the sale deed, write the sale deed first. Afterwards, as per the requirements of the buyer and the seller, few, few clauses can be added or removed from the sale deed draft to finalize it. So there is a format which has to be shown by the advocate to the buyer and the seller. And after going through, if they want to make any change, then you know they can change and those changes are incorporated. So after the sale deed is drafted, it is completed, it is signed both the parties, it is registered in the name of the buyer upon its finalization. The process, process of selling a property is governed by the Registration Act 1908. So friends, remember, it is the 19, Registration Act 1908, which applies to the transfer of ownership in case of property. So what documents are required at the time of creating the sale deed? And these documents are, friends, building plan, allotment letter by the builder, then recent tax receipts, the property tax has been paid, the proof for that payment of those uh, tax, and then tax ut re recent utility bills, electricity, or maybe water charges, or IGL, power of attorney if applicable. So power of attorney has to be used if the person himself cannot be present, if applicable. It is not always there. That is why the words have been used if applicable. Title documents, documents pertaining to the ownership of property. And in case of resale of property, all previously registered agreements. They are required in case a property has to be resold. Then at the time of registration of sale deed, the buyer must pay the stamp duty required. Buyer has to pay the stamp duty. Remember friends, Presently, the charges on stamp duty vary from 4 to 6 percent on the property's sale value. Different states levy different amounts of stamp duty on properties. So, this stamp duty on properties differ from state to state. Now, I would like to cover the heading fundamentals, fundamental components of a sale deed. Which are the various components of sale deed? The sale deed usually consists of a set of terms and conditions. So what do we contain in the sale deed? Sale deed has a set of terms and conditions. So that, you know, amicably, the ownership can be transferred between the two parties. While creating the sale deed draft, several essential components are included in the document. So the uh, various points which are included in the sale deed, I would like to discuss now. Very first point is friends, details of both the parties. The sale deed contains details of both the parties, their names, age, addresses, they are duly mentioned in the sale deed. The parties should thereafter sign the sale deed. After you know all the points have been covered and the sale deed has to be signed by both the parties with the bona fide intention. And it has to be signed by at least two witnesses. They write their name as well as their address. Next point is, friends, property details. The property to be sold is the core component of the sale deed. Therefore, we an elaborate briefing of the same has to be enclosed in the sale deed. The details pertaining to property such as, so what is to be included in the sale deed? ID number, the exact location of the property, the address, Square footage, so that this is 160 yards or 250 or 500 or 1000, etc. have to be recorded. If it is a residential property, details about the building should be mentioned. Moving ahead, friends, the next point comes that is of indemnity clause. You all understand the meaning of the term indemnity, which means compensation to make good the loss. The particular clause is added to the property to ensure that the seller frees 
the buyers from all the previous taxes, loans, and charges relating to the property. So seller, it is a responsibility of a seller to discharge all these liabilities or obligations. All taxes, taxes which are unpaid, loans, if the property is subject to certain loan or charges, all are to be discharged by the seller. It is a prime duty of the seller. The seller will pay up any mortgage and loans before finalizing the sale of the property. The buyer should be prudent enough to verify the status of encumbrance is the liability. The term encumbrance means liability. Wasted on the property through the registrar's office before signing the sale deed. So friends, buyer must be very conscious. Buyer should find out from the registrar office whether you know the property is subject to encumbrance or liability or not. Now, next point is friends, payment details. The price at which the owner will sell the said property should be specified in the sale deed. Along with the sale price of the property, the information related to the advance made by the buyer. How much advance has been paid by the buyer? It should be clearly stated in the sale deed. Information on the amount paid in installments. If that amount has to be paid in installments, how, what will be the mode of payment? And date of each installment. It should also be very clearly mentioned in the sale deed. This is one of the most important factors that has to be mentioned in the sale deed. Failing to mention the same could create unnecessarily legal hassles between the parties. You all know, friends, if this agreement is silent about this and unnecessarily there will be chaos, confusion between the parties, okay, then the parties will resort to the court. They knock the door of the court and would like to take action, legal action against the other party. Mode of payment. What will be the mode of payment? How the amount will be paid for the property purchase? It must be recorded very clearly in the sale deed. The standard mode of payment such as bank transfer, online payment, cash, check are clearly stated in the sale deed. So we are living in tech era. Generally, you know, the payment is made online or to check because that is the, uh, one of the secure way of making the payment. Then possession of property. Seller has an obligation. It is obligation of the seller to place the property in the possession of the buyer after completing the registration process. The exact date on which the buyer will acquire the possession of the property must be mentioned. It is always given in the sale deed because after all formalities are fulfilled registration and all the registration process is complete then you know the keys of the that property a so-called property that has to be handed over by the seller to the buyer then witness of the property the testimonium Clause of the property includes that two witnesses are mandatory for attending the sale deed. About this, I have already mentioned at least one witness from both the sides, that is the buyer and the seller, should sign the sale deed. The witness has to share their complete name, address and age. Next is the default clause. The sale deed speaks of the terms and conditions required to manifest the sale. When the stipulated terms and conditions are not abided by, the default clause comes in handy. If they are abided by both the parties, then there is no problem. But the, this clause will be required only, default clause will be required only when their parties, they do not fulfill these terms and conditions which have been laid down in the sale deed. The default clause basically mentions the measures to be taken when the terms of the agreement are not being met uh, uh, either by either of the parties. Already I have mentioned friends. When there is a default, the conditions are not acceptable, they are not abided by, 
then the need for default clause arises. This clause directs the defaulting party to pay the penalty or the damages to the affected party. So damages, you all know, friends, you know, there is one chapter in ICA, which is chapter number 10 under second unit, you know, remedies in case of breach. Damages are nothing but compensation. Monetary loss, which has been suffered by the injured party. It is a guilty party which has to compensate the injured party for the loss. Over and above these friends, eight points, I would like to add more now. The seller of the property must also make some mandatory disclosures to the buyer in the sale deed. These disclosures include defects in the property. Property's title must be very, very clear. If there is any defect, the property is defective, the title is defective, it should be brought to the knowledge of the buyer. And if dispute arises, then which of the courts the dispute has to be filed? If any execution of conveyance of property correctly, property correctly, and clearance of taxes and other charges related to the property, among others. So all these are the disclosures which are to be made. Considering that the sale deed includes all the rights and the obligations of both the parties in detail. You all know, I have already mentioned that the sale deeds always in, talks about, speaks about the various rights and obligations of both the parties, the buyer and the seller. Its implementation reduces the risk of for both the parties. It not only should be drafted, it should also be executed. So this is all about the way, fundamental components of the sale deed. Let us know, friends, now what is this sale deed number? The sale deed number get gen gets generated after the document registration and the payment of stamp duty and registration charges. Or we can say, in other words, when the registration process is complete. One can find the sale deed number on the payment slip. And also it is mentioned on the top right corner of every page of the entire sale deed document. It is there on the every page. The format of the sale deed number, that is friends, document number, then year is there, whether it was 2021, 2022, or 2023. Sub-registrar office initials. SRO, which stands for Sub-registrar office initials. So I have just given the specimen here, how signatures are delivered or what is the format of this sale deed number. This sale deed documents which are required for property registration. Let us know friends, which are the various documents which are required for registration of property. So I would like to, a sale agreement you all know, title, deed, draft, that is the uh, documents regarding the ownership of property, then extract sharing agreement signed by the builder and the property owner, then allotment letter from the housing board, power of attorney if any, about power of attorney term already have explained, the no objection certificate in case of property resale, NOC is required, blueprint of the authorized parties, then completion certificate, when the building got completed, construction was complete. There's a completion certificate which has to be procured, which is required for the registration of property. Property tax receipts as a proof. Encumbrance certificate. Encumbrance means the liability. There's no liability in relation to this property. Then stamp duty receipt. Identity proof of all the parties and witnesses involved. So ID proof is must, the parties buy and the seller and their witnesses also. Possession letter, property papers from the bank in case a loan has been taken against the property. If the property subject not is not subject to loan, then these properties are, the bank papers are not required. Occupancy certificate and the last one is passport size photographs. 
So which are the points which must be borne in mind while executing a sale deed? The first one is friends, uh, <coughs> the sale deed must include a clause that transfers ownership right to the buyer once a purchase is completed. So because the sale deed is concerned with the transfer of ownership, title must be free from all liabilities or encumbrance. The registrar's office must verify the encumbrance status, whether you know the document is subject to the property is subject to liability or not. All utility bills, including water bills, electricity bills, property tax, etc., related to the property must be paid. There must be no further dues such as maintenance charges pending. Nothing should be pending. All charges must have been paid. A sale deed must specify all terms and conditions under which the property has been sold. In India, all these points already have discussed. It is just, uh, you know, uh, the repetition of the points. In India, an agreement of sale signed by the vendor alone and delivered to the purchaser and accepted by the purchaser has always been considered to be a valid document. In the event of breach of the by the vendor, it can be specifically enforced by the purchaser. Breach you all know, which is non-fulfillment of the promise. If there is any breach on the part of seller, vendor, then you know the agreement or the sale deed can always be enforced by the purchaser. That is a legal action can be taken uh, uh, against the owner by the purchaser. It is all about this video, friends. It is all about this uh, practical uh, exercise relating to sale deed. I hope, friends, you all must have understood all the points. If any of the points is not clear to you, you can always write without any hesitation in the comment section and I will definitely answer. Happy watching to all of you. Have, great, have a great learning of this business loss paper through my videos. Uh, keep smiling and shining always. Goodbye, friends. We will meet soon. Okay, friends.